All right, at the end of the last video, we moved the head down as a group onto our sketch. And that informed where we line it up with the spine, with the shoulders, and where I could cut away from it. So what I'm doing right now is cutting away from the hippo's mouth and showing you, let's see, where there is kind of remnants of selection. So often I'll use the magic wand at this stage because you want a clean cutout just to select the empty space around a layer. Up, I'm in the wrong layer. Because it will reveal what is kind of floating out there that you don't want. So though my jaw is cut out cleanly, when I select the empty space of it, let me get on the right layer, there we are. So I select the empty space around the jaw, it will show me, it's a little bit easier to see on the gray than the white here, but it'll show me these little selections that I don't want, right? That there's a lot within that layer that still can be deleted. And I can do that very simply with my lasso tool. And I'm just going to hold down shift and add to this selection of empty space. Just add this stuff that I don't need. I don't need to get rid of all of it because it's behind other layers. And then I'm just going to delete that. And it will get rid of all of that funky debris. And maybe there's little things I missed. I use my lasso, I hold down shift, I add to the selection, and then I can delete. And then to check it, I can select that empty space and see none of that exists anymore. All right, so my head is good. The, uh, the bird body, though, needs to be changed a little bit to fit my sketch. And so that's the next stage, is to transition this into the chest and to some of these other components. So, good time to save my work, Command S. It's going to save with the name I have it saved. And at this point, I'm actually save it with a new name because this is still my sketch name. And the one thing I left out of my naming convention was my name, which is the one thing you really need to have. So if you ever are missing the file or can't find it, we can just search the whole computer for your name and see whatever files are, are important. Okay, I need to go to my folder for assignment two. Go to my references. And now I get to bring in some other components, right? Now that I've tidied up the head into this folder. So let's see what do I have. Neck and shoulders, chest and shoulders, rock chest and foot. <laughs> Lots of options. See what some of these are. I can do rock. Ah, uh, the toad. Yeah, the toad's pretty pretty helpful. I think I even found another one. This toad, which could also be used. Which I kind of like the colors of. Which toad? Which toad? There's this one for the butt. I think this might be a good one to start with because that shows me a really clean back line. So what do I do? I bring it in. I want it to be big enough, right? And then I can transform it before I rasterize it. So I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm going to tuck it underneath the head and then use my move tool. Still as a smart object to kind of place it in line with that spine. And then if I need to grow it, I can take its opacity down as a smart object still. And I can stretch it. And I can distort it, warp it, do whatever I need.
And you can actually play with opacity while you are transforming, which is very helpful. I'm going to try warping it and pushing that one arm back to that shoulder. There's just a lot you can do once you know what the anatomy is meant to be doing. All right, so I think that's going to work for me. Now I'm going to take it up to 100% opacity. I'm going to turn off my head group. And I'm going to rough lasso around it. I love how sharp and in focus that frog is. Command J, duplicate it, then get rid of the smart object. But I don't really love how similar it is to its background. because That's going to make it trickier to cut out. So let me just show you one way I can go about that right now. I can just take my lasso at the 0.8 pixel feather and just choose my own edge here along this sharp focus to just delete and cut out except I'm on the wrong layer delete and cut out okay for the time being I'm going to turn the sketch off I'm also just going to fill my background edit fill all with middle gray because I know my creature is about the right size. And at this point, too, I can crop my image a little bit to save some memory. I needed a lot of that space for the head and for different things, but now I know this is kind of a safe working area for my creature. And save it. Okay. So I got the back in there. For chest and shoulders, Let's see what some other things I have. I have what's called a lava belly here. This is where this gets funky. But to show you just how much you can do with transforming, I'm going to move this on top. And as a smart object, I'm going to transform it. I'm going to warp it. Kind of shift it into place. Take its opacity down a little bit while still transforming it. And I'm trying to seam, map this edge to where the belly should be for my kind of blob creature. I can turn my sketch on. That's close. Oops. Oh, I'm on the crop tool still, that's why. No, don't crop. Back to where I was free transforming. Okay. So now let's take it up to 100%. And same thing, I'm going to use my lasso and select where I want it cut out. So I'm going to start underside of the hippo jaw. And I'm just going to find my way through these rocks. I'm creating my own edge with a 0.8 pixel feather. You can do it in chunks like so. And then hold down shift and add to it. This is all still the smart object. And this is that kind of bottom edge I want to play with. Ooh. A 
lot of it there. Fold them together. Okay, now I'm going to select the inverse. Well, let's add all of this to it. I know I don't need this stuff. Select inverse and duplicate, Command J. And then delete the smart layer it came from. So I've got something for the belly. I've got something for the back. And if I take the opacity down on the belly, I can see where the arm is. that I can use. And I might at this point actually internally composite that. So I'm just going to grab this arm as a separate element. Maybe with this is like a shoulder pad. Cut it through, go to the hand. I like that the hand is already on the ground. Cut around it a little bit. And then Command-J, duplicate, move it on top of the belly layer. Then I can move that arm underneath my head to that shoulder. And I can distort it a little bit, widen it up at the top. Warp it. So it feels like it's an anatomy that can kind of work. We'll see if I use that arm that way. Okay. I haven't done any kind of color adjustments or levels adjustments to any of these things. I'm just trying to get them in. And now, let's see the bottom. That's going to be a lot of this slug stuff. And of my slug reference, yeah, I think it's that one that gives me the most compelling bottom edge, kind of slithering along with all that muscle. I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to actually move it below my other stuff as I'm trying to find this bottom edge. Use the move tool. Kind of see where that goes. Decide what I need to cut out. I'm just going to rough cut basically this stuff. That's what I need. Command J, get rid of the smart object. And then let's transform it a little bit. I feel I felt safe rasterizing at first because I knew this was bigger than I needed. So now I can use things like distort and warp. Still want some overlap. There we go. All right, just show this creature. And now,